It's not unusual to see a plane departing Atlantis Hartsfield International Airport, but the people who traveled on this Boeing 747 last July were a very special group with a very special purpose. They were bound for Newcastle-upon-Tyne, England, as participants in the inaugural flight of the Friendship Force, a citizen exchange program between the United States and the world. The 384 Atlantans who boarded this plane were on their way to spend 10 days living and working with residents of Newcastle-upon-Tyne. As the Atlantans made last-minute preparations for their trip, some 380 Newcastle residents arrived in Atlanta, where they received a warm welcome from the families who would be their hosts during their stay in America. Among those on hand to greet the arriving ambassadors in Atlanta were Georgia's Governor George Busby, State Director Jasper Dorsey, and Friendship Force founder Wayne Smith. The travelers were tired after their transatlantic trip, but there was no shortage of enthusiasm in either ambassadors or welcoming hosts. My name is Jasper Dorsey. I'm the state director for Georgia of the Friendship Force. And I think you English ambassadors have a small feeling of welcome today. The spirit among your hosts over here and the rest of us is just overwhelming with pleasure that you've come to grace our city. We consider you cousins, relatives, folk and friends. This naturally is a most happy occasion for us, the inaugural flight of the Friendship Force, the first in history and the first of many, many more successful ones. We are pleased and delighted that the first one is to Georgia and to Atlanta. Governor Busby echoed those sentiments and gave the state's official welcome to the Gordies as those from Newcastle are called. I don't know of any other program in the world that can do more to promote an understanding among the people of the world, of friendship among the people and peace for all than this program. Now it was time for the American contingent to begin their phase of this experiment in friendship. With a few important details cared for, including the renaming of the 747, these novice American ambassadors were ready to go aboard. Like their British counterparts, they came from all walks of life and ranged from the very young to the elderly. Included in the group of ambassadors were representatives of the press who kept those of us at home informed during the 10-day exchange. Upon their return, three Atlanta television stations produced documentaries which captured graphically the variety of activities which made up that great 10-day exchange program. Newcastle upon Tyne, England, industrial city of England's northeast and gateway to beautiful Northumbria. What possible connection to Atlanta, Georgia, half a world away? Until July 4th, 1977, no connection whatsoever. But on that day, July 4th, known in history as the day America tore itself away from the British Empire, on July 4th, Newcastle and Atlanta formed a bond which may never be broken, the bond of friendship. 
381 residents of the Newcastle area and 381 Americans, most Atlantans, swapped places for 11 days. The program is called the Friendship Force, and the Newcastle Atlanta Exchange was the beginning of what could become the biggest people-to-people -people program the world has ever seen. Georgians in Geordieland, an action news special with John Pruitt. And WXIA took this approach. We're staying with their friends and seeing what life's really like over here. Because we tend to judge you by the uh, the cop films that you send across, and it's not really a fair image. I'm very interested in the black culture down here. You know, you can appreciate that coming from Newcastle. We don't have a very big black population at all. Oh, let's try one of these. What the book everybody said to try? You want to try a Whopper burger? Is that what they say? Hands across the water. Hands across the sky. Hands across the water. Hands across the sky. What are you looking forward to most in England? Uh, seeing Shakespeare country and all of that, because I'm an old school teacher. Really, truly, I'm looking forward to seeing everything to be seen. Hands across the water. Hands across the sky. <laughs> I am so happy to meet you. Lovely. I'm it's really I've been so fun. excited about great, it. Great, You'll be exhausted. Yes, I'm here. And from WAGA. After a bus ride from the airport, we arrived in the city. Our first stop, the Civic Center, where ambassadors and their hosts were matched up. That took some time. Every one of us, 381 visitors, had to meet and move in with our hosts. But when the name and number matching was all done, nobody was left without a Newcastle welcome. We were a pretty tuckered out bunch of ambassadors on our first night here in Newcastle upon Tyne. But no matter, we tidied up, we girded up our sagging psyches, and were made officially welcome at a reception given by the Lord Mayor and his wife here in the Civic Center, Newcastle upon Tyne's pride and joy, and the same building from which President Carter spoke on his recent visit. The Lord Mayor and all his regalia and his wife, the Lady Mayoress, held a reception in the banqueting hall for the Friendship Force and our hosts. While a roving pair of Northumbrian pipers curled sweetly against the den, the hundreds of Georgians and Geordies, as the New Castilians call themselves, partook of good talk, good drink, and sausages and sandwiches and canapes and cheese. An interlude of officialdom followed. The Lord Mayor spoke cordial words of welcome to one and all. Friendship Force founder, Reverend Wayne Smith, answered on behalf of the visitors. And Lieutenant Governor Zell Miller read a Friendship Force proclamation from Governor Busby then presented the Lord Mayor with an Atlanta memento, a glass dogwood sculpted by Hans Frabel. Then the Geordies put on a show, supported throughout by the strains of Joe Bennett and his Northumbrian traditional group. For more than an hour, local folk of amateur standing, but professional skills, danced, and they sang, some more, like this sword dance, a fascinating blend of geometry and tradition. After more than an hour of performances that got larger and larger and louder and louder applause, the young singers of Callanwald obliged with music that ranged from one of our old songs to one of England's proudest and the audience joined the youngsters in singing God Save the Queen. Following the 
inaugural flight of the Friendship Force, Flight Director Jim Newman talked about the success of the entire venture with Dick Yarbrough, whose responsibilities included media relations on the flight. Well, I think we've learned something about friendship, and that mm -hmm. is that uh, people are people everywhere. Now, this will sound trite to some people, but I think having been through it, we recognize this, and we recognize with the problems <coughs> and with the long hours and with the frustrations, the end result is more than worth it. When you make a friend, as you made and as we made, uh, and the marvelous friendships were made between Newcastle and Atlanta. And you know, there were also marvelous friendships made right here in Atlanta. Uh, I worked with people on the committees that I had never known before. That's right. And uh, this was a, a real benefit, too. Yeah. Some, some very interesting people here in Atlanta that, uh, that Diane and I got to know that we would never have, have had the opportunity to meet. And I know you, you were the same way. It's a good program. It's a super program. And uh, I think after, uh, after this flight, uh, I think it'll, it'll be a going thing and be a part of the future for a long time. Right. Really do.